Okay, so there we have it. The 3D scanner is actually completely built. It doesn't take very long to get it assembled. It is pretty easy to do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually make sure that we place it against a background that we're not going to walk around against because if you have a background where you're moving, uh, it'll mess up your actual results. So you want to make sure you've got somewhat of a solid background or at least a background where the lighting's not going to change a lot or where you're not going to be passing back and forth while it's doing its scanning. Okay, so the device does need a power cable and two USBs. One of the USBs is for the camera camera that's on it. The other USB is plugged in directly to the board that we've put inside there. Uh, of course, we're going to go ahead and get it started to get that going. Um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to actually take this little checkerboard piece that we've put here and you're going to want to measure how close to the bottom piece the checkerboard is in millimeter and that is how you actually know where to start. And what you're going to want to do is just put it on the piece just like this so it is horizontal facing to, if you're looking at it straight on, it's going to be facing the left and, and that's going to be the way that you're going to want to have the actual thing set up when you're calibrating it. Another thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is these lasers. It does say to make sure that you have them going vertically up and down on the object when it's actually doing its uh, scanning. So if you look right here, we'll go ahead and do a close up on here. You can see this is the direction. They actually need to be horizontal. So the actual lasers look like the, the lines inside them are horizontal and that's what's gonna create a nice vertical stripe. Uh, also, if you look here, you can see kind of there's a little bit of a gap, and I've done that just by simply out screwing the, the outside piece. Um, when you start to do this, you're gonna notice that the lines are gonna probably be a little bit fat and blurry, and you want the lines to be really crisp and thin, so by, uh, by spinning that, you can actually change the lines from being fat and blurry to very skinny, simply by just you know screwing and unscrewing this top piece right there. So that's gonna be what you're gonna be refining right there to get the better results. Okay, rather than OBS it, we're just gonna kind of record the computer screen here, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave these links in here for you. The first thing that I did is I went to a Cyclop Rep Rap Wiki, and from here there are plenty of instructions, and you can actually go on down here to the bottom. It shows you you've got your resources, uh, where you can buy it, as well as your firmware, your software, all this awesome stuff right there. So if you click on software, of course, it's going to take you over here to Horus on GitHub. And then from here, you've got your Logitech camera drivers as well as your installer. Make sure you install your camera drivers and then, of course, the installer. And then we're going to go to one other page after that. And here we have uh, more information on the Horus. All right. Thank you, Jesus Areo. All right. Appreciate that. 3D scanning for everyone. And it kind of gives you the whole launch wizard on everything that we're going to kind of go through right now on how to get it set up. So if you have any more questions, you can definitely look back on this material right here. It also shows you once you finish your, uh, once you finish getting your mesh, you know, your, your model, you're going to want to open up either Blender or Mesh Lab. And from there, you're going to be able to actually fix your model, make it more refined, just, you know, clean it up 
and make it something that you're actually going to want to save to an STL. That way you can print it and that's going to be the full, you know, full scale uh, or full circle right there. Uh, right here you can get Mesh Lab 2016, Windows 64 for free. So that's really easy to do. All right, all those links will be in the description. Go ahead and open up Horus. Okay, and you'll notice on the main menu that you can actually do a few different things. You've got advanced controls, calibrations, you can do different scans. You also can open up old files. So over here on the right, I've got a few different old files for things that I was scanning and testing out. This is uh, some tuna cans with uh, lime on top. Also keep in mind that the, the bottom is only going to scan what it can see uh, above what that uh, what, the, what your calibration unit is. So you're probably going to either want something that you can put uh, on that or you're going to want to change your calibration so that it actually makes sure that it sees that area, which, which I did not. And with the wizard launched, it's going to go ahead and connect to the scanner. Right now it's not connected, so you're going to see it's going to connect. And then in the background, you'll see it's connecting to the board and you can actually hear the board somewhat respond. So the lighting is pretty bad over there. Um, the one thing that you can do with lighting is hit that right light button, double click it, and it'll sometimes fix the lighting up a little bit. You can also do more setups in the settings in here. Um, one, one thing I, like I showed you right here, I've got mine set to 21 millimeters and I inverted the motor direction. So we're gonna go ahead and auto check based off of where this is at and hit auto check. And you'll see that it kind of goes and does some little geometry there. And does a little quick scan and goes, oh, right, good job. And then you can hit next. If you cannot hit next, you're probably going to want to either make sure that this is placed at the right angle, which, like I said, it should be somewhat, you know, catty corner or at, at, a, at a you know 90 degree angle to, to the actual platform at that time. Um, also, you want to make sure it's got plenty of light. If it doesn't have enough light, it will have some trouble, that's for sure. So. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually hit the calibrate button. This is going to take a little bit longer. This is where you can actually see the lasers and they'll go kind of one after the other. And this is where you can either, you know, spin them a little bit or, you know, take them out to make them thicker or thinner. And this is a pretty thin laser, as you can see on the actual piece. So I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like when the piece is going. All right, you can change the resolution from high, medium, and low. I'm gonna keep mine on high. Lasers left, right, or both. I'm gonna keep both. I can also make it a simple scan where it just creates points, or I can have a texture scan where it creates the texture along with it. And that, of course, will be based off of the camera. I really wish that that camera was a 1080p camera and not a 720p camera because I, I believe the resolution and the focus really is somewhat of a problem for the scanner. It does seem like the, the objects um, are always just a bit out of focus and I don't think that this camera is the best one for it, but hey, that's what it comes with. So um, I'll have to see later if I can actually create, uh, you know, use different cameras. It'd be great if I could exchange it for a 1080p camera, it'd be amazing. This thing, I've never scanned this before, but we're gonna just take this thing and we're gonna see if it can scan. So let's try it out. Let's go ahead and put it on. Somewhat in the middle, right? Somewhat in the middle. Just throw it on there. All right. You can see, you can see, you can see it plenty well. All right, now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit this play button up here. It's gonna say you're gonna delete the current model. Yeah, that's fine, we've already saved it. It is gonna go ahead and start putting some lasers on here. Like I said, you're gonna wanna make sure the lasers are as thin as possible and straight. There's one on that side and one on the other side. So it's actually doing two at a time. So you can kind of see alternating one to the other, one to the other, one to the other. And then what it's doing over here whoop, is it's going to create that 3D model. And of course, if you're not seeing what I'm seeing, you can go up here into the view, oops, sorry, and go into scanning. Make sure you highlight that video. That way you can actually see your webcam side by side. Over here, you've got your model preview and you can already start to move it around and see what it's capturing. Of course, it's gonna miss some things, but you've got, like I said, the, the mesh lab that you can put it into afterward to kind of clean up the model, make it a little better. And then of course, you can either 3D print that model, you can put that model and input it into Unity. Uh, you can do all kinds of different things with these 3D models. 
which was what makes this super cool. Uh, I do know some people would take some 3D or some clay, they would uh, form that clay, put it on the bed, and then scan that clay, instantly throw it into a you know, blender, put it into a Unity, and then use it into a game assets, which is pretty cool. This scanner can be used for a lot of purposes. I, I think it's really, really cool with what it can do. At the same time, uh, I also uh, have noticed it does have some limitations. It, it, it needs to be pretty much a colorful object. It likes round objects. It doesn't like uh, really crazy obtuse shaped objects because, uh, you know, let's be honest, the, the camera just cannot keep up with, uh, with everything and, and, the, and the lasers just are not as accurate as you would love them to be. As you can see right here, some of the points are kind of drifting around on the, on the model right there because it's not exactly sure where it's capturing certain things. And like I said, most of these things you can fix up later, so it's not a big deal, but uh, it certainly is still really, really good looking. Um, also having said that, there are other photogrammetry programs out there where you can simply just take photos of, of different you know things and, and turn them into 3D objects. Um, this one's a little bit different with how it works still. Uh, I find it to be very, very fun, and I'm still still just learning. I'm, I'm right here, you know, uh, at the brand new, uh, I'm, a, I'm a brand new user of this you know, technology, so uh, I've got a lot to learn and I'm sure there's a, a lot more refinement that's here to come. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, finish this one up. All right guys, so that's it for now. We're going to go ahead and well, like I said, uh, keep working on this 3D scanner, see what I can do with it and, and, and refine it, make it a little bit better. Also, we're going to be working on another video with the 3D scanner uh, with, you know, from beginning to finish, from scanning an item to importing it into Unity to using it, you know, like for a game asset, as well as from scanning an item to putting it into a, you know, 3D printing program like Cura and then actually 3D printing it. So we're going to go ahead and do both those things, but I need to go ahead and get some more knowledge and learn a little bit more about this thing. But at this point in time, it's really, really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.